I tried to ask him for anything. There was even a time I asked him to help me when I had rent issues. He just ghosted me. And then later, after a while, that he knew that everything was already calm and I didn't need the help anymore. He came back and started texting me again. So it happened that, like, two like two weeks i stayed in my friend's hostel for like two weeks because we were having exams so during that time he still used to text me so like he even called me one day like that and he said he wanted to see me so i talked about the man with my friend and i told her that like have like i don't want to have like any sexual relations with him at all at all at all but at that time i was also in need of some money for some personal stuff that i wanted to to sort so that was already the idea of like stealing cash from him like maybe from his car because mostly people used to like have cash inside their car in the middle place of their car so the idea was that like if he agrees to do bdsm with us like to like BDSM is like the kind of sex where you tie the person's hands and legs. So while his hands and legs are tied, we can like take cash or whatever valuable we can find and live with it. But it turned out that that day, even when we went to see him that day, when he asked us to come, we even talked to him about needing jobs. But he told us that they were, like he did not have any job available at the time. But with time that you'll be able to find something for us and he also liked my friend that day he was even like he was telling my friend that he likes her and he wants to sleep with her and everything basically that day he was like that he was proposing that he wanted to like have sex with the both of us so we now proposed the car sex to him and he agreed and the bdsm too he agreed he wasn't telling us already from the garden about how he was going to deal with us and everything when we get inside although we were not bothered because we knew we were not planning to have sex with him and we just wanted to like take his cash and leave so in our turn that i started reading so instead of us going to the car he now told us to go across to a building that was across the garden when we went to meet him. So when we went inside, we were waiting at the reception, and then he just came and he started going inside, following him. Then it turned out that it was a room. Like, we didn't know that the guest house that was there, maybe he works there or he owns it. So when we went inside the room with him, my friend went inside, she excused herself and went inside the toilet and I don't die inside the toilet. So I guess the video is, is for you can actually go online and you'll find the full version of the video, right? So killing in Nigeria is a serious problem. The country has one of the highest homicide rates in the world with an estimated um, 334.52 per 100k people killed each year. Um, Violence is often attributed to a number of factors, including poverty, inequality, corruption, unemployment, the availability of firearms, and a weak criminal justice system. Poverty and inequality can lead to frustration, anger, and resentment, which can sometimes manifest itself in violence. So corruption undermines the rule of law and public trust, which can create an environment in which people feel that they can get away with committing crimes. Like literally you can walk away from committing murder. Now unemployment can lead to idleness and boredom, which can make people more susceptible to turning to crimes and a weak criminal justice system means that these criminals often go unpunished, which can embolden them to commit more um, crimes. We keep hearing these gruesome murders uh, and the stories happening, I mean, almost on a daily basis. And today we really want to know why. You know, why do you have or why do we have this high or increased rate of killings, especially here in Nigeria? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to read one is your three eight four six six three. All right. So this conversation is, um, I don't know, it's just too much for me. Like literally, you turn here. Uh, there was a, um, a story of a woman that um, killed you see, her husband now in the city in Ogun State. Like if you go on <laughs> on um, the dailies, right? Just go on social media, not even the blogs. Like dailies, I, I always go on Punch, 
um, mm. newspaper. Like you will see so many killings because they take a lot of human angle stories. Mm. This one killed somebody. This one stabbed this one. This one did this. This one. I'm saying so. What is the problem exactly? Is it that first of all maybe we don't know how to resolve conflict, or is it a frustration, or is it this issue around I want to get? Because I mean we've heard stories of. People using people for you know for diabolic things to be able to I mean they believe that they can it can get them money and all of that like we really have a very high rate of you know just taking lives you know almost like we're losing our conscience I don't understand so do you, do you understand why this is happening mm, I mean it's um val well if we start from value system I mean it's um. Every day it keeps diminishing, you know, and then um, there's also pressure, pressure to be this, pressure to be that, pressure to make ends meet. And then um, there is the economic situation. Um, people, it's, it's biting hard on people. And um, when people feel that um, their, their, their backs are against the wall, they say that uh, a person who has nothing to lose you know, will do just about anything, mm -hmm. you know, so they, all, they they probably feel that that frustration, they need to vent it out. So sometimes they get themselves in situations that would escalate quickly. And I am also sure that sometimes they don't even know how quickly it, that, that situation, you know, would escalate. Mm -hmm. And then by the end of the day, everything is crazy. And, um, you know, we hear all this. But again, I want to say that um, it's not so new. I think what has made it like um, very popular right now is just because of um, the digital space. Because I mean, someone somewhere is filming something, is recording something, or like before, all these things have been happening. I mean, way back 90s, we used to, we, there, was, there was a high rate of rituals, you know. People would say, oh, they went to this place and someone disappeared. You know, we, the, that, that, that was happening. True, but there, there was no internet or exactly. anything. So, so we couldn't people, even report and ex tell the stories. Ex exactly. True. So um, for me, I think that um, the fact that this has been happening for such a long time um, speaks to um, not just the moral decay, but to the weak social justice, justice system, system. True. that we have in Nigeria. If we have a robust and an actual, like, an active system that works, because that's the key point, that works, people will know that there, are, there is punishment. Mm. When you err, when you do things that are criminal, you know that the law will try you and this is what will happen. But now people just feel, okay, you know what, I, I can easily circumvent the law. I can um, easily, you know, get away with doing certain things, you know, so... It just it's, it's just a cycle. The next person will do it. The next person will do it until there's a total breakdown. So hmm. I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, I also think it's just a blatant disregard for human life, hmm. right? Um, if you really care about the next person, like you genuinely care, even when you're fighting, there are times when I was when I was a kid, when I'm fighting with my sibling, I'm very careful. Once I sit down on this chair mm. and I use my two legs and push you, you fly to the next room. And that's because my legs are my legs are strong mm. and they're also very long. So the, the power I would use to push you would make you find yourself on the other end of the room. <laughs> so even when things like that are happening, there's somewhere in my mind that tells me I can't cause bodily harm. Yeah. So I have to restrain myself and that's because i care about my sibling right and let's take my sibling out of the equation no normal human being <laughs> even if you you do harm to me i still care about you because a part of me is like okay what if i do this and you die what if i do this and something happens and you just slump mm. and the next thing they pronounce you dead i'm going to go to jail yeah. right there are people who don't have regard for human life and they are very selfish people like she said that there are no consequences for actions people do things and because the justice system isn't very airtight it just feels like a lot of people are getting away with things i mean we see the news every day was it not a guy what's his name i can't really remember his name that killed his girlfriend yeah he's a killer boy right yeah. killer boy killed his girlfriend mm -hmm. and then that was it we've we've not heard that anything has been done about it. People just keep talking about it on, on social media, but then there is no arrest. No arrest has been done. Nothing. He hasn't been brought to book. 
So things like that. I mean, sometimes people might want to chuck it off to, okay, it's the frustration in the country and mm -hmm. all of that. But uh, come on. Yeah. Like, the so country used to be way better than what it is now. So what, what exactly is your excuse? The other day we, we saw a story about um, a mother or a stepmother or something that killed mm. her stepson over something very little. Mm -hmm. The next thing people found out. And what happened was when she was beating the boy and then he slumped and died. The neighbors caught her when they were trying to bury Oh my goodness. The so they were trying to take the boy from they were secretly taking him out of the house so they could go bury him or dump him. How do you even somewhere. beat someone to a point? Did you, did you get I mean, like where 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 is your mind? Right? In that moment when you're inflicting pain on someone, isn't there a conscience? Isn't there something? Some people's hearts, I, I believe, is just under their feet. Or the heart is not even available anymore. Because where is your conscience? So you see cases like what you've just painted, mm -hmm. right? When you have a system where, um, for instance, we are not accounted for. I don't know whether government knows that they exist. Mm. Do you understand? I'm not in their data. Mm. You know, yes, I have a passport, I have this, I have that. But I'm saying to you that the larger population in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So when we call for things like census, we're not calling for census just because we just want to know our numbers. It's to be able to say, oh, even chicken, Touch one of her cheek, the mother hen, yeah. the way she will charge at you. So that's how it's supposed to be, that every single Nigerian is accounted for. So you come tomorrow, I know Diola that she exists, I know her social security number, I know that this is where she stays and all of that. If anything happens tomorrow and she's, on, she's nowhere to be found, I'll be able to trace her, right? That's where, why you hear, it's not like these murders or these killings don't happen abroad. They do. But because, you know, like some people have actually died. Nobody well, knows. Yeah. Yeah. I have a friend. Every day. In I, even, so my, 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 I mean, hearing you say things that used to happen a long time ago. Yeah. My father's sister, they said she just walked inside the bush and never returned. Oh, okay. Only God knows what happened to her. My friend, her, her sister, till today, just disappeared mm -hmm. into thin air. That, is it done anywhere that somebody just disappears in the country and nobody knows anything? So you see, it's even beyond, say, the heart. If a system, right, even outside of the government system, the mm. healthcare, I mean, the welfare system, mm. if, a, if a country decides to say, you know what, every human being in Nigeria's life matters, yeah. and we must account for those lives, right, and we even start to do the barest minimum. Let's even know our numbers, let's know that we exist. But you hear politicians bringing up all sorts of mm. things, because guess what? These are the things that they continue to use to say they have 10 million voters. So they are very concerned about their numbers when they're doing elections and forget that there's a governance that needs to happen forget that there are people that their lives are at stake their lives are at risk because anybody just feels like i can wake up and get up now the reason this girl this uh, socialite now in kwara state the kwara polytechnic uh, man the reason his case is out there is because he's a socialite and he's the son of a a, a, a prominent person do you understand mm. if no we'll never hear the story the other lady that is in jail now, Abi, I don't know where she is now. The lady that killed the spot, spotty, uh, uh, super TV, Abi, the TV man that died in a, in a, in a, uh, a short letter in Lekki. Yeah. You understand? What, 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 what's the story like? What's happening? So even for the ones that have been found out, right, what is the, what's the action point that has been taken? So you know what is even really worrisome for me? The young man that we took his story yesterday was the one that voluntarily went on social media and said he killed his girlfriend. Do you understand? And yet, the police saw no reason, you understand, to arrest or do anything. Only for, it, it took the uproar of the people and all of that for them to not say, okay, now they are, they've declared him wanted. And I hear that he has left the country. He's fled the country, mm -hmm. you know? Um, the young man that just died recently, Mobad, it, that thing is murder as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Do you understand? And I even even if it is, case is still do you understand? We don't even know what the situation is. Because it's also murder. Like, literally, people die, and it seems like life just continues. You know, I have lived in a place where I see people just carry knives and slaughter people, mm -hmm. right? When they had all this. And you see, these things is actually a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. So then, the killings used to be religious wars. It used to be tribal wars and all of mm -hmm. those things. I mean, in Kaduna, so many people were killed. 
you know at some point literally if i see if i hear heavy noise like if they if you it's celeb christmas or all those period that they do all those um knockouts, um, knockouts and or you know and all of that i used to have like literally i'll, I'll feel my heart pumping mm -hmm. out of fear you know because i i lived it i understand it that you not take a human life you know so it's 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 really sad and the proliferation of weapons within the country this is not today. You remember even during Jonathan's time, how they used to um, intercept. You keep on hearing that custom is intercepting a, a container load of uh, arms, a container load of bullets. A con Where are those things? Do you understand? Because now, a 14-year-old was, I just saw a story that a 14-year-old was arrested in, uh, in Augusta for possession of a, 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 what's it called, a gun. Mm. You know? These things, like literally, it's, and and the way it is now, anybody can just wake up. Yeah, yeah. Because they know that I just need to relocate, Jola. Mm -hmm. If I kill you today, I will just go to Zamfara. And I'll be good. That's yeah. it. Jola, nobody would, nobody will find me. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know how we're going to solve the problem. Mm. You know? But you know what? Let's take a break. I'd like to open our phone lines. Then we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. Like I should be calm. We went back inside with the man, and because he already had eyes and attention of my friend before, he started touching. I immediately we came out, and he carried her and placed her on the table. He removed his shirt, like he got naked, and he got on the bed. Then I got on the bed with him. He allowed my friend tie his hand and tie his leg. He was even the one that raised up his leg for her to tie him. So after she tied his hand and his leg, based on the fact that we were in a room and not in a car, because normally we thought that if we want to have car sex with somebody, it cannot be in a public place that people can easily see or hear. But because it was in a room, so we were already thinking about what we we're going to do like in case like maybe he start shouting or something so um af apart from the two ropes that we used to tie his hand and it's like there was one other tiny clothes like all these clothes rope that they used to tie on gown that was tiny so after my friend tied his leg and his hand and she placed the rope in his neck so i had this um small clothes that i used to tie on my head like small anchor that i used to tie on my head like a scarf so like after because my friend already tied his leg and his hand so my own turn was to like try to put the handkerchief in his mouth so that that small rope i can use it to like close it so that in case if he wants to shout he won't be able to shout but because i panicked and i freaked out i when i put the clothes in his mouth he removed it and he told me that he did not want it then me too i now took the clothes and i put it in my mouth and i told him that it's cause we don't want him to moan too loud that's why but he refused so during um, after that time that I refused to put the clothes in his mouth, I just like left him because I also panicked. That was why I could not tie the clothes in his mouth. So during the course of me being on the bed and just caressing him and everything, my um, friend went to the bag. We already had um, this thing before. We already had um, Refno in our bag that we were supposed to like give to him so that he would sleep like after, so in case so that we'll be able to leave. So my friend put it in her hand and when she tried to pour it into his mouth he turned his face away and he didn't enter his mouth he said he didn't need it to lighten up i tried to ask him for anything there was even a time i asked him to help me when i had rent issues he just ghosted me and then later so we had to play this video again to the end D jola said she has killed before <laughs> God. So if you just tune in, it's our ladies' night out, and we're discussing the topic, why do we have an increased rate of killings, especially here in Nigeria? Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0180384663. Our phone line is now open. The number to call is 0702500 Remember to turn off the volume of all the devices that you're watching us from. You know, this interesting thing, I mean, you see stories why we killed the our nephew. Mm. And this one, woman was arrested for killing a uh, child. Mm. This one, you know, father is arrested for raping and killing the, the toddler. Mm. There is just too many stories all over, you know, um, the media. 
But I wanted to ask a question, right? Do we blame this on poverty in the land? Because there's this part of this story where the girl says, oh, we asked him for money, we even asked for a job. You know, do we blame this on poverty or this thing is actually just the state of the mind? Because I don't know how poor I would get mm -hmm. that I would think it is okay to take somebody else's life. It's, 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 it's a combination of a lot of things, mm -hmm. really. Um, sometimes we can't really understand poverty unless we've gone through it ourselves. Poverty is not just having money. It's a mind thing. It's, it's, it, I think it's something deeper. And um, for some people, when they feel that um, there is no hope, Mm -hmm. or there is no way out of it it's like they've seen their grandparents their parents they they live in a community where they see abject poverty every day and uh, they become how do i say it if it's someone that is desperate to come out of that situation they get to a point where it's almost as if i would do anything to come out of this situation and sometimes that's that takes them on parts that they they have no idea mm. you know how it's gonna turn out i mean for them this video now for them it may have started from let's just because she said they were just yeah. so in fact they opted to have the sexual activity in the car mm -hmm. because they wanted to just quickly it, date exactly. him and pick what they needed to she said because she knows that a lot of them they keep money in their cars so she wanted to just take the money mm -hmm. But she didn't know that the man was the owner of the whatever the um, this year, and he eventually took them into a room. The room was not part of the plan. I mean, she said a lot of things, but mm -hmm. I just didn't look the girl like she does not know that she her, her life has been ruined. Yeah. What if she? Because the way she's even before, talking, she's doing like this, I mean, like she might you not know? even understand the 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 consequences of that, like the, the no the consequences the the that word. the word is the word is uh, here. Is here. Yes. <laughs> like, really. You don't know how, you don't know how how, how deep the extent, the extent you know what, what she has done and because again her situation again you might also even want to say that she's probably done this before something like this may have happened and she got out of it and she just feels this is another situation I will get out of again you never can tell because this is Nigeria Nigeria is not, there's nothing that is black and white mm. in this country. So do we blame this on parenting? There's parenting, there's poverty, there is um, economic disparity. There, there is too, ma too many reasons. There is not, I'm not sure that there is one thing you can blame it on. There is also greed on the part of the individual. Contentment must be a... You say the a, man is stingy. <laughs> <laughs> how do you how, how, how are you entitled to someone else's money that will qualify you to say somebody's thing but you are asking how am i how am i entitled to so the same way an armed robber will come aggressively smash your side mirrors i mean your side windows you know and and um, take up i think we have a caller do we have a caller hello hello good evening, yeah. good evening. thank you for calling Yes, this is Pastor Ladipo. Hi, Pastor Ladipo. Thank you for calling. I'm calling for You're welcome. You see, um, what is happening in our society today is as a result of bad moral values. There is no more moral values. Do you know that in those days, there, eh, somebody is on the street where you live can correct you, and your parents we even be happy to call it in town. But we have entered into a, a time where we have normalized the abnormal. I want to call your attention to something. Today, people make money suddenly. And when you try to question it, they will ask, did you question his poverty? So there is no sense. There is no sense of accountability anymore, anywhere. That is why you send children to school, and before you know what is happening, they started doing something else. 
May God save this nation. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you so much. Like literally, it's so painful. Mm -hmm. The word we're looking for is implications. Yeah. You understand? <laughs> they don't yeah. understand it. Yeah. So I mean, like, so I, I was saying that do we blame this on parenting? Because again, in all honesty, see, if you came back home with toothpick in that my mother days, and my mother did not, my father did not give you. <laughs> you will explain yourself. Explain it, yeah. You know, but now I've seen on social media, you know, you don't calculate it. What is this? What do you the influence? That you can afford to buy a 50 million era car. Mm. What are you influencing? Hmm. Do you understand? And I've seen people that have done careers like rising to top uh, leadership positions and, and, they, look, they, and they cannot even afford yes, those kind of lifestyle. Yes, yes. You know? I also think the role the mid see there, there is a whole lot of moving parts to to even you know moving past this to solving this we must also stop sensationalizing vices and um violence you know the role of the media because sometimes in the bid to also um report and create content and news mm. We, we, we are gradually getting to a point where we are romanticizing the idea of bad behavior. Mm. And for some people that, have, that, that are not privy to anyone telling them otherwise, they begin to think that, I mean, for this thing to have made the TV, for this thing to be so popular, it must be right. Mm. Do you understand? Now, these people will go ahead and commit so many atrocities. And then it is on when they do something so crazy, they end up being the news, you know, or being the statistics that they will, and then they will start looking at, oh, oh, so it wasn't right. Because honestly, we must assume that some of these people don't even know that what they are doing is wrong. Mm. So again, it, it's, it's all hands on deck from parenting to instilling, you know, moral values, to community engagement, to, you know, bridge like an economic... Real, like I mean, real, let me hear your thoughts, Jennifer, really? because you see, if you remember that sports um, TV guy, I, I forget the name of the sporting, mm -hmm. I mean, the TV channel that died. You remember that she also said something around them g giving a substance, and this girl mentioned that they wanted to put the mm -hmm. substance, the man said, no, it doesn't need it, and all of that, because the substance is meant to sedate him and all. You know, there's also that part of drugs. Mm -hmm. And again... The kind of things I've heard about, especially Lekki, mm. the proliferation of drugs is alarming. Like mm -hmm. everybody, do you understand? Like everybody is on drugs. Mm -hmm. And you know, the kinds of things I've heard about, you know, there are some things you cannot do except you are on a very, um, what's it called, on a very different level. Like fully laced in drugs. That's the kind of, those are the things they do. So I'm just wondering, like, how do we fight it? Because you see, it's one thing for you to do something with, with your sense. It's another thing when there is, I mean, these things are available yeah. all over the place. Yeah. yeah. Um, with this particular story, I, I genuinely already have a bias. A bias. And I already have an issue with this picture or this video. And that's what is a man of that age looking for with little girls of this age? That is already a problem to begin with. But then that's not even the topic um, of, of the day, right? Um, when you see young girls like this, they have people that they look up to, right? And again, it boils down to media. It boils down to social media. And yes, there is a lot of, there are lots of drugs out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you walk on the street, you're seeing people signaling to you. Even a street not too far from here. You just mm -hmm. see them. <laughs> and... To me, it's just like, this is broad daylight, has some shame. Mm. But obviously, mm. there is no shame anymore, right? And people will tell you, when you ask some questions, people will tell you, oh, I'm trying to survive, right? You're trying to survive, you're trying to make ends meet. There's so many ways to make ends meet. But the thing is, you just don't want to put in the work. Yeah. You don't want to go through the process. Because going through the process means that you have to go through fire to be molded into something useful, right? Make make something out of your life but because you want to get somewhere very fast and no, then but, but this, this these people have seen people do it and succeed yeah because i mean you will hear very scary stories you know when we are doing makeup we always hear stories mm -hmm. you know you hear scary stories of how you know people put i mean it's a risk yeah and they they took the risk and they succeeded mm -hmm. yeah 
So, you know, why, why don't I also take the risk? I may also get lucky. Yeah. Well, I, I get that. I mean, sometimes even when you're doing something legit, you see somebody do something legit. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you hear people being so ambitious and very passionate about what they want to do is because they've seen somebody do it and succeed. So the same thing when it comes to the bad That's side of things. Yeah. It's, there's a role model out there. There's somebody that you're looking up to. There's something you you see. Somebody has done it and succeeded. I mean, I can do it. For some for an arm dropper to come and meet you in traffic, Lagos traffic, with all the boldness to say, I can collect your bag, I can collect your money from you. It's because they've seen people do it and succeed. And they weren't, they weren't caught. Mm -hmm. I mean, bringing it down to, to drugs. There are drugs everywhere. Mm -hmm. Low grade, high grade, mid grade, it is everywhere. It is being hawked. Every street, every mm -hmm. corner, it, it is there. When you check, I feel like if you start mm -hmm. doing stop and search for everybody, yeah. the amount of things that you would uncover, mm -hmm. right? People actually, like, sometimes when people talk about drugs, you think that it is maybe people and on the street. Mm -hmm. See, even in your proper organizations, right? You go to your offices, you realize yeah, that yeah. some of them, or maybe 20% of them, are high and they are working. Yeah. Mm. Do you understand? Because they tell you that's yeah, the only way they can function. Exactly. Yeah. Even your bosses, your CEOs, we know these things. Mm. Even your CEOs, you realize that some of them are high half the time. Mm. They yeah. take drugs. They buy drugs. They, they are, and they are doing different kind of drugs. If it's not weed, it's loud. If it's not loud, it's... Or, or, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or it is heroin or crystal meth or something they are doing these things mm. right i mean i've seen it mm. you'll be in the office somebody tell you they're taking a break mm. they're going to smoke they're going yeah. to get high and they're back in the office mm. and i'll be looking at the person like are you, you, are you normal mm. Mm. do you understand so things like that and if you ask questions if you ask questions it feels like oh you're putting your mouth in something that doesn't concern you mm. and the thing is to, to to get rid of those things right the government needs to take proper action it starts from the government because you and i cannot really do much about it i think that uh, yeah i think so because even the justice if for instance justice alone see this yeah. police officer that killed the lawyer mm. that's i mean they've, they've sentenced him to death if we have more of more, those sentences yeah, yeah. Do you understand yeah. but let's take some comments i think okay. we have a few yeah. comments go ahead okay yes. so good evening ladies on the increased killings i'd say impunity primarily responsible for this in nigeria though we blame economy or poverty the truth is the failed system and the dysfunctional society fuels the killings in a country where justice is for the highest bidder life is cheap in nigeria and increasingly getting nasty brutish and short until we have a, a real government who understands their primary their primary responsibility to the citizens as enshrined in the 1999 constitution yeah. being welfare and security of the people not much is going to change mm. in sociology there is a term called anomi which is a state society reaches where the values totally where the values are totally dis dysfunctional and emphasis on material acquisitions and making money by any means a society of the end justifies the means. Hmm. This is from me or Molly. And I think that I is think where we have so got apt. into. The end justifies that's the where we've got into. Yeah. Because literally, even listen to our songs. Yeah. Like, you see, that's what I'm saying. Like you rightly said, is a hydra headed yeah. monster. Mm. You can't just say people are dying. Yeah. There is a link to it. I've mm -hmm. talked about what's it called? Our population. Mm -hmm. And we do not even have sanctions, right, mm -hmm. for those populations. I've talked, we've talked about, you know, parental, mm -hmm. um, what's it called? Parental um, um, involvement. We've talked yeah. about in societal pressure. Societal pressure, yeah. so the influence of social media and all of that. Now, look at even as this man has said now, we're in a place where your you, musicians will tell you, uh, what's it called? If you know get money, I hate that song. If you know get money, hide your face. You know, if you do, so if you don't have money, you don't even have the liberty mm. to talk. Mm. So you hear things like, ah, um, whatever happens, anyhow, anyhow, we must make them. You understand? Mm. You hear things like when you finish make them, you go do Yahoo, you take Colorado, you take this. These things are all embedded in our music, especially music. And you know, one of the greatest tools of influence is music. Mm. You know, that somebody is listening to those kinds of songs consistently, there is no way your brain will not turn. 
One day you just wake up and all of a sudden you do not recognize who you see mm -hmm. in the mirror. Because why? Those things have entered your system. It's now become a part of you. Mm. Right? So if we say we want to solve the problem, then there has to be very, very deliberate thing. And this is not, we don't need a government that wants to make us to, you know, like this kind of like, let them, let it, let it look like I am working, but I am not working. Mm. No, we don't mm. want that. Mm. We want a government that is really serious. Yeah. There was a time where cocaine, I'd be, well, yeah, it was cocaine that was found in Ikorodu, very mm. large chunk of cocaine. The next thing we hear that they burnt it. Mm. How? Hmm. You know, I can't wait to have those conversations with them daily. Why would you burn those kind of a thing? Do you understand? There are so many things that we've heard about NDLA arresting this, arresting that. See, we've seen the one in India. You will see the, you will see it through. Mm. Yeah. But you see, yeah. in, in Nigeria, it is quick to find the person that you caught the person. Mm. What happens afterwards? After. You, yeah. only hear, you only hear about the arrest. Because, yeah, because else. you see, for multi-headed um, issues, problems, we're looking at simple solutions. We can't look at simple solutions. We must also use the approach of, okay, for you to tackle a multi-headed... You must approach it. You must go to the roots. One thing is, one thing I know is that when people are refusing mm. to put structures in place, yeah. it's because they know that the people... They are benefiting The people from, beside yeah, them, yeah. right, are yeah. also corporates. Yeah. yeah. Right? And people, nobody wants to be on the black side or somebody yeah. or the bad side of somebody and say oh it's like jola is doing something now and i put rules you know what this policy blah 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 blah. if this happens it's going to affect but then i need to be able to say you know what i don't care mm -hmm. right i don't care what happens if jola wants if, if, if jola doesn't want it to affect her then she needs to come correct mm -hmm. And then, but then not a lot of people is at the end of the day is integrity, mm. right? Yeah. If you don't have the integrity to actually do the right thing, mm. then things will keep going bad. I will keep having the same complaints over mm. and over mm. and over again. It has become a vicious cycle. And this is just the beginning of things. Like we're, we're just seeing these things. There are yeah. more atrocities yeah. to come. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Now the thing is how do we mitigate yeah. those things? And if we don't put things in place to check it. I don't, I don't know. I'm we not even sure this country, we have gun control laws. <laughs> like, because that's another thing mm. that is going to, it's, it's going to almost be like an epidemic. The, the fact that we've allowed illegality to stand, yeah. you understand? And we're refusing to just take the bull by the horn and, and uproot this thing called corruption from mm. the root. It would, it, it would be tough to solve some of this problem. And we'll see more of this. Because yeah. a girl needs money. Yeah. Yeah. She has seen her fellow girlfriend carrying iPhone 16, she used to want to buy it. Oh, who is the person that is the man? Mm -hmm. They will be killing you people. Exactly. Oh, I've said my own. Exactly. Because the truth is, I mean, literally, exactly. yeah. people, that's what is going to be happening. So you have to find a solution. You understand? Solve the poverty problem. Solve the unemployment problem. Solve the issues around, you know, um, health care. Solve the issues around poor education. Well, now we have a, a senior special assistant on um, values. So let's see. Maybe, just maybe. Maybe. maybe she went there <laughs> just maybe she went there <laughs> they said i should wrap up <laughs> Yola will not answer you before we go shots fired <laughs> ah, she went there follow us on, <laughs> on social media at wish africa you can interact with us for that thank you to everyone that sent in their comments and called us remember to like share and invite your families and friends to watch our follow the conversation when i saw that post minister of Utekola. please if yeah, you miss social advisor, <laughs> advisor of values, national values, we are coming for you. Mm. The act of killing mm. someone not only destroys their future but also tarnishes our own conscience. Mm. This is a very deep quote, mm, right? Yes. Um, we can't get to that point where we completely lose our conscience. Our conscience is what keeps us, you know, Humans. in check. Yeah, you know. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. <laughs>